So a year ago, we had a historical moment for Malaysia, a peaceful transition in government. Now, coming up to the one-year anniversary, we thought we'd gather a group of prominent journalists uh, to look at how well the new government has done. So let's take a quick look at Pakatan Harapan's report card. Um, welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so I would like to begin with Saiwan. What would you say has been your quick assessment or how would you rank or rate Pakatan, uh, Pakatan Harapan's report card for 2019? An honest, an honest rating would be very low, but uh, I think this is something that everyone is doing for the first time. So the expectations should be very low, but unfortunately it's not. We are expecting a lot from them and unfortunately they are feeling very bad. Okay, so the, the grade you're giving them is low because our expectations are so high. Are too high. Okay. My, my, my personal expectation was very low. Uh -huh. They're still above my expectation at the moment. But I think uh, to the folks out there, uh, they're not doing very well. Okay. And, Bakar? Uh, <coughs> I think it's not fair to grade them that low, Simon, because uh, for what they've done over the last 10 months, I think they've tried. Oh, no. But, but what, what, what is happening is the, the, on the ground, you have these political foes who are not giving them enough time. I think the expectations have got nothing to do. The expectations were set before any political force managed to do anything. So uh, these are expectations of the people? I'm saying that the expectation out there is unrealistic. Mm. I'm not saying that they have done badly. Okay. Was, was it unrealistic because of the manifesto? No, it was unrealistic because the euphoria of victory was so high, they can't help but fail. And what but, about this side of the table? Yeah, I think <laughs> I, I would disagree that I don't think that the expectations are unrealistically high. Because I think if we look at some of the demands over the last few mm. elections, you know, um, of course the one in DB took centre stage towards the the uh, in the build up to 2018. But I think the expectations have been there for a while now. I think the way that um, I, I mean to some extent, yes, it was euphoric. But I don't think these are unreasonable expectations. I think they're, you know, with, with, with Pakatan actually having the states, uh, the two states before 2008, and actually increasing in its governance, I think it also showed that it had the capability to deliver. So I think in some ways, it was actually quite I mean, reasonable seriously, uh, uh, expectations. Governance and all that were very pretty low on the people's priority. Mm. I think the expectation was many of them expected a magic wand to come up and push. Malaysia will be this wonderful country full of everything. Malaysia Baru. Yes. Right? Right. We, we, so, we want a new uh, that, Malaysia. No. Personally, I was I'm, I'm quite I'm quite pleased with what they've done so far. My expectations are very, very low. Uh, I expected them to fight with each other on the third month. <laughs> that didn't come till about halfway. Okay? Uh, many of them still seems to be friendly to each other. Okay. So as far as on a personal level, I think they're okay. Okay, so I think what, what we're doing is we're um, benchmarking Pakatan Harapan's performance based on expectations of the people. But where are those expectations coming from? Would it be fair to say that the expectations came from the promises made in the manifesto? Yes? You see, I don't think the expectations are unreasonable. The expectations, like Saiwan says, has been there for a long time and they are reasonable expectations. Pakatan's problem was that they painted themselves into a corner by putting those expectations into their manifesto mm. and and basically putting themselves their word that they will fulfill these all these expectations now look you cannot it's been said many times i'll have to say it again you cannot undo 61 years in 100 days or in one year yeah but why i as a former teacher myself, I'm giving them a C minus. A C minus. <laughs> Terence is a C. tough grader. It's, I'm very good with my marks. <laughs> I can ask my former students. But why I am very unhappy with Pakatan Harapan is that they have been distracted from fulfilling this their manifesto, their promises, mm -hmm. by the internal problems, by the politicking. What, you know, with uh, Bersatu looking over, looking over its shoulder, everybody else over looking over their shoulders. At Bersatu, Bersatu is focused on expanding their power base. You know, so much so that the aspirations of the people that they promised to fulfill seem to be taking a back seat at the for, uh, at the moment right. to all these um, these current priorities of Pakatan Harapan, which seem to be political priorities. 
to uh, for coalition partners to fortify themselves. So tackling the uh, the race baiting, exactly. the religious bigotry, and the royalty kind of interfering in a way that many did not expect. These are all taking its toll on the leaders. Okay, this, fighting that front. This is where I differ from you guys. Uh. Hey, this is Mahade. <laughs> He's been doing, he did it for 22 years and he doesn't know any better. He's doing the same thing and I'm thinking he's doing it quite effectively. Given his uh, limitations. You, you, about give, something no, no, but you must give. understand that these problems were not created by my... No, no. Let, no let's I'm look not, at the problems yes. individually. The I'm, I'm, not, problem, I'm, not, the I'm, not saying, I'm not I'm not saying that, uh, that the problems were created by Mahade. What I'm saying is Mahade is solving the solution, finding solutions in inverted commas to his normal Mahade way. And that's where I think is the problem. So if I come back to the point earlier, I think expectations, I will repeat that, it's it's reasonable. Mm. But the performance is problematic because I think several things. One, there's been a lot of criticism that they have not moved away from being in that opposition mentality, which I think I actually affects the way that they respond to, to issues. And you know, in, in some instances, it's um, also sometimes forgetting what their position was when, when they were in the opposition. Mm. And the expectation that, well, if you, that was indeed your position, given some of the cost of living issues and all that, um, why you are not able to meet it now? So then the question arises as to whether were you in opposition for the sake of being in opposition? How do you realize some of these okay, uh, promises? Okay. So, so what I, do you guys yeah. make about the, you know, often what we hear them say is that, look, the promises we made in the manifesto before we won Putrajaya were made before we realized just how bad things were, what dire straits Malaysia's coffers were in. So now they say, listen, new priorities have emerged. We're trying to uh, right the wrongs from the but previous I, I don't. I don't think everything that they promised in the manifesto needed money. Right. Mm. Yes. That's a good point. Many were policies. Mm. Mm. Okay. Uh, I agree with former Chet Guterres. <laughs> <laughs> C plus is about, it's about fair. Is that what you would give as well? Yeah, yeah, I, I, I see it's okay. C minus. 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 Give them a little form five and no, see no, what happens. It's, it's, then we grade them, right? No, it's not the, f the, the, the they don't have enough time. Uh, I think what Terence said is very poignant that they seem to be so distracted. Distraction is Dr. Mahari Muhammad's middle name. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, he loves to look for bogeyman. Uh, his past bogeyman has been Singapore, and the usual ones are the Johor royal family. Okay. So, he is doing exactly the same thing he's doing now uh, that he did 22 years or 22 years. And I think all of us, including myself, get, as journalists, we get caught up in, the, yeah. in his solutions. Yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. Because, I, yeah, because yeah. then it also shows the inability of the rest of the cabinet mm. to also influence the agenda, right? Mm. I yeah, mean, yeah. okay, maybe he was indeed necessary for mm. bringing that you know, coalition together at the last mm. minute. But I, I think it kind of signals also the inability of the rest of the, the coalition yeah. members and cabinet members mm. to influence the agenda. I, I, I really don't like the fact that we, we have to say, oh, it's because Mahathir intervened mm. in order to right. do this. He sh it shouldn't be that way. It should be a different style of uh, governance. I, so I, you're right that he knows what he did before. Why are we allowing such patterns to or, keep or repeating? Let him, let you him know? battle that front. I mean, let him, let, I mean, Maybe he has to for, for international... Yeah. Relations, but right. he's the only one who can handle it. So while they do that, what happens to the rest of the cabinet? Yeah. Where are they? Mm -hmm. I mean, they should be micromanaging instead of using other excuses. But he's still not the same Mahadi that he was, that who governed us for 22, 20, 23 years. And he himself has said, I'm not this, uh, you know, is I cannot run the country like I used to run it before. Right. But I mean, it's a different time. It's a different time. You know, I have to deal with different partners. And, uh, you know, of course, the, the, what he's not saying is that my party is not strong enough mm. for me to be the autocratic prime minister that I was mm. uh, before. Mm. But to be fair to him, in this conversation, mm. Mahade needs to be a separate topic mm. from his cabinet. His cabinet is a totally, I think, would struggle to get D minus. <laughs> I'll easily give it a D. You, you, know, you know what? Easy. And that's precisely what oh, we're going to do, Sai Wan. <laughs> <laughs> we, are, we are going to be talking break, about, <laughs> about Mahadev in, uh, in another episode. But let's, let's talk about that. I mean, the performance of the cabinet. Because 
um, in the one year that Pakatan Harapan has been in gov has been in power, you know, in taking stock of their performance, we shouldn't just focus on how much they fulfilled uh, the manifesto, but also their ability to communicate that message. I would message, say right? one year Mahade has been in power, <laughs> yeah, not Pakatan Harapan. Okay, yeah. let's let's talk about the ministers then. I yeah. mean, when you talk about the ministers having trouble navigating the uh, nuances of making public comments of communicating what they've done, how much they've achieved. Because to be fair, we, we just look at the manifesto. What if ministries are working hard behind the scenes? We just don't know about it. Well, I think, you know, for the average citizen, voter, you know, reader, where is the benchmark that you have, right? Mm. I mean, the manifesto provides a good, and that's the reason why right. you come up with manifestos, right? Yeah? Because you somehow articulate a, a kind of a broad policy or vision of where you want to take this government. Whether or not they felt, okay, may, we didn't think we were going to win, that's, you can't use that anymore already. The mm -hmm. fact is they are in power. Mm. They are in power. I think the, the manifesto provides a good reference point to say, okay, how are we then supposed to assess whether this government is delivering? I, um, and I think there are areas in which they, they, they definitely are focused uh, on trying to provide. I think some of the measures in the first 100 days were intended, although not fulfilled entirely. Uh, but I think to me what is missing, and I've said this I think in some of the very early shows on Light FM, it's not obvious what the vision is because you seem you, you have a bit of a scattered uh, approach mm. across the cabinet, uh, across the ministries. Uh, challenges from the bureaucracy is to be expected. Any change will have that uh, bureaucracy uh, resistance. We saw that in 2008. Um, I think taking that um, aside, I think it, it feels a little bit scattered. You find that some, you know... A little bit scattered. <laughs> oh, okay, <yeah. laughs> very scattered. Um, and I think the point that you made, Melissa, whether they're able to communicate well. And right. I think that, that you know, it be, it's also because I think they are unsettled and unsure themselves, mm. which doesn't sim signal a good, no, strong no. leadership. I mean, for, for me, it's very simple. The four of us are, are in the business of trying to help them to spread the message. I don't think any one of us here can honestly say that a majority, I wouldn't say many, a eh, majority of the cabinet ministers have been able to pass that message correctly mm -hmm. to us for us to forward these messages. Mm -hmm. I think for except maybe one or maybe two, mm -hmm. I think the rest have failed miserably as far as passing messages to us. Would you care to name these one, maybe two? Uh, <laughs> I, th I, think, I think Anthony Luke does a quite a decent job. Transport yeah. Minister, okay. okay. He does a, does a quite a decent job. Saifuddin. Saifuddin Abdullah. Okay, as a foreign minister, mm -hmm. I've seen him in action and he's been able to communicate. You hear him on RTM and Astro. And well, he has previous experience. Yeah, but, but, mm -hmm. but, but yeah. there's only experience is that it's a totally new portfolio for him. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, the rest, I think what the rest like before you <laughs> castigate the rest. I think they <laughs> lack a solid media team, media advisors. No, they right from the prime minister the level. Okay. You have I've dealt with some uh, media people from the current ministries. I think they're nowhere to what we used to have in the past. I, I do a, I, I, I do I do disagree. You need people to, to convey it, the minister's thoughts. No, Sorry. it's not. Jared, Jared, what were you about to say? It's not just about them communicating with us to the public. It's about them communicating among each other. Uh, are they not Does the left hand know what the right hand is doing? Or because want to know what the left hand is doing? Or want to know what the right hand is doing? Do they view themselves as Pakatan Harapan ministers? Or do they view themselves as a Bersatu minister? Mm. As a DAP minister? As a PKR oh. minister? Hey, that Bersatu fellow is screwing up. Let's just keep quiet and let, and let, let him uh, give you numbers that, to hang that's himself. That's what you think is happening? I guess it was exactly what's happening. Yes. Mm. No, but my, my, that affair is... Yes. My, 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 my whole point is <laughs> that you're talking I've about... Seen, I've seen... Uh, Others defending each other from different coalition parties. No, but they Pakun, have, they have Pakun, the thing is, if you look at the minister's communication team, many of them are old hands. Mm. Most of them were ex press Sorry. secretaries. Many of them used to work as journalists. It, I think that the ministers have got problem communicating with their own team. Let's start with that. But okay. also maybe the idea of what it is that they're supposed no, to no. communicate, uh, no, right? No, that's the like, point. Because the, in the, the first place, the, they don't... That they are supposed they, to be accountable yeah, about. They give an know? impression, the ministers give an impression to their own team. I'm not sure whether I can do this. Mm. Let me check at the next cabinet meeting. Mm. And that, doesn't, and give, week, that mm. doesn't give confidence to the team. And then, so when you really announce it to the team, the team says, you sure? You spoke to the cabinet already. So you're, you're saying that they don't have that messaging down, right? They don't even know what it is that they're communicating? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, I, I think, uh, you know, because I, I, I did say once that, um, you know, it's not about being polished in your communication. That's not the point. I think it's to understand, and this could make you different from the previous government, mm. which is to understand 
what your levels of accountability are through the media to the public, right? I think this is a great opportunity because it's a transition mm. to say, well, yeah, these are the things that we want the public to know um, and you you ought to be subject to scrutiny. I think it particularly came up in Mazli's case. I mean, he's like, he gets mm. battered all the time. But that's because I think, you know, you don't think that what you're communicating is going out to the public. And so there's no thought put in mm. either to prepare for it or to... to to create the messaging in such a way that it becomes effective. Masli has gone through three communications officers. Why is that? Why do, why do they ask? His communication team don't last long with him. Do you boil that down to just simply a lack of experience? Being in a government? I don't think Mahade has the best candidates for ministers. Oh, no. He, okay. could, he could do a lot better. So is that is that why we had the Council of Eminent Persons? I mean, the CEP was there for a reason to provide no. guidance to no, the young. Yeah, that, that's no. another, another no. discussion. Also, <laughs> that's that's different discussion. No, the, C, the CEP was supposed to be uh, the people that set up the policies, dig up what's wrong, and then the cabinet is supposed to implement it. If you do not have a capable cap uh, yeah, cabinet, cabinet yeah. uh, the, the CEP could be a five hundred strong, and still nothing will be done. Uh, I'm I'm saying that. Uh, Mahade still practice the Barisan formula, uh, four from Bersatu, three from Amana. You know, right? Rewarding, that, that, rewarding that, that, that performance. Not, he should have taken elections. advantage and says, no, I want six of the best. This, 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 and this. I want six of the best. This, this, and this. Right. I don't care with the seniority. The only one he did it to was Yobi Yin, mm. who came from nowhere mm. yeah. and became a full minister. Mm. He could have done with twelve Yobi Yins. Mm. The other one is that the, the disconnect between the ministers and the senior government lead, uh, officers. Mm. Uh, apparently, apparently, the officers are not advising correctly because of the attitude of certain ministers. I mean, this is stories I get from inside. You're talking about ministries, so uh, ministry, government, government ministry, officials. You're talking of, I'm talking of DGs and secretary generals. Okay. So there is a form of. Uh, a wall between them. There's also an element because of distrust, right? Distrust because Huge distrust. Mm. Distrust because of the party. You mm. don't like the AP mm. ministry. Mm. They don't like Chinese, mm. Malay, whatever. Mm. So the race is race thing comes in, and Correct. also uh, the culture. The new ministers apparently do not understand the old culture where everybody comes to a meeting, they chat, they laugh, they joke, have coffee, and then they start a meeting. But the new minister don't forget the walks in and says, okay. Yeah, the curry puff. Curry puffs. <laughs> the koi kape. Right? Yes, yeah, yeah. Okay. The new minister walks in and doesn't even wish them good morning at times. So okay. They are, they are pissed off with this kind of And he doesn't change. understand or doesn't realise that there are many procedures that need to be fulfilled before something can be implemented. Mm. General orders, for instance. Mm. Something as basic as that. You know, he thinks it's because the minister can come in with the magic wand and get things done. Then he realises, then this KSU advises him that say, hey, we actually we need to do, we need to we need to go about it this way. You can't do it your way. You know, we're doing like the cabinet people apparently. Yes. You don't even okay. know that the cabinet people must be prepared. All right. right. Like, I mean, we've, we've done quite a good job picking apart the current part. But the if, if you can just add, they are now in control of the communication tools. Right. Through Gobin, through MCMC. But they're not using it. They're not using it. it. Where else? Uh, BN and AMNO. I am very grateful they're not using it. Yeah. <laughs> No, no, no one is asking them last to be B N, to 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 sing a Satya Malaysia song. We didn't want propaganda. No, we didn't want that. You know, it's not propaganda. It's just messaging. What are we doing? Disseminate the right information. The right information. <laughs> can, can, can you remember that? Can we fake for the opposition? Like what happened uh, when they failed to show a certain minister's <laughs> live broadcast for Chinese New Year? Yeah. Oh, okay. Right. No, but, I, but I think it comes back to the fact no, that no, what no, exactly no, you want to communicate, the, so the, the right? Point is I that mean, they 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 learned very quickly. Ah, wrong thing to say. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but for, for me, uh, answering your original question, <laughs> the manifesto, I think they have implemented something like 30%. Should we look at it as a checklist of yes, yes no, yes, yes no, have, yes, they, no? They have no choice. Uh, they, but, but it's been a year. No, but they have no choice. Uh, that is their report card that they put out from the start. Mm. Uh, Mahade has said that it's a trap for the Barisan National. Mm. Should they win, they have to implement these things. Mm -hmm. uh, now, they, they, he has even admitted he's fallen into his own trap. Yeah. Uh, having admitted that it is your own trap, we have no other choice but to take off the boxes. Okay. Mm. Pass, fail, pass, fail. And okay. then when they reach 
to form five as Parkland said. <laughs> ah, yes. Then we can tell them you fail SPM or you pass with my colors. Okay. All the right. best thing is the people have got back the power so they can decide. Yes. Right. So that was the biggest exactly. achievement in this whole exactly. That, that, that actually, exactly. actually yeah, that, that's my point. Mm. Uh, measurement as a country, we pass A+. Plus. Yes. Measurement of the government, okay, I'll stick with you. C-. <laughs> and, and also, I think if we actually look at the manifesto mm. and look at the responses from the various surveys where people are saying they're still concerned about cost of living, welfare, the yeah. manifesto actually addresses that as a major part of its uh, mm. promise. Yeah. So, in fact, it is also not abiding by its own promises where it got all the vote, votes from because people are concerned about uh, issues like this, day-to-day -day issues and it, it contributed that, that sort of like huge drop in uh, confidence. So mm -hmm. I think going back to what your, your, your promise was actually will do you justice because that indeed is still the problem that many well, face. Well, 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 just, just a note, but the data survey showed that 87% of respondents are willing to give Pakatan Harapan more time mm. to accomplish. Okay, so promises. so one year really is this arbitrary timeline that we're looking at for them to fulfill this. I mean, there, there has to be some no, more time. No, Melissa. But you, you no, when, we, when we did when we did a hundred <laughs> days, then we, they came up with a phrase: "You can't build build a room in hundred days." days. Yeah. And then we one year. They says, "No, no, you can't build Putrajaya in one year." And then in the next year we come back and have the same conversation. It's only two years, and then three years. Hey, they got two more years. No. The clock started on May 9, yes. it keeps running. Yeah. They have, they, they can't run away from it. Mm. Uh, whether we, uh, we are personally satisfied with it, that's our own, but we have to say it up. No, I'm not satisfied. Yes, I'm satisfied. Yeah, because the government is responding not just to this. Five years is never a guarantee for anyone. Okay. And I think we need to get that in our minds. Right. It's not a guarantee five yep. years, number one. Number two, so many things are happening globally and locally that people have to confront this very quickly. So there's really, I mean, it's not to sort of be callous and do things in a rash, but to recognize that if you don't get the house in order, we are going to not, we are not going to be able to respond to some of the very big critical issues okay. globally as well. So when you talk about getting the house in order, what has been in this past year the most outstanding ac accomplishment in trying to get the house in order? Terence, you have thoughts? <laughs> I can have a C like minus, you know. <laughs> so, <laughs> so how do they even get to C? Because it could be lower, right? <laughs> <laughs> it must be some passes. <laughs> they have the SRC. I think it's the SRC. <laughs> well, of course, if you do, if you're looking at the, the, the what, what's the main thing that they have done mm. is to remove this air of kleptocracy from our environment. Mm -hmm. For instance, you know, it now you know if you go overseas, you're a lot more proud to say that you're Malaysian. Than, than you were like last year or the year before. Right. Okay. So they so they have fulfilled that part of bring of of bringing justice on on MDB, but uh, and, and I will give them an A for that, an A for for uh, uh, for removing okay. that grey so cloud of uh, addressing one MDB, SRC, all that. Correct. Okay. And then the implementation of the uh, and then the introduction of the national anti corruption plan, mm. which in a way, I mean. If politically just shooting themselves in the foot, but it's a great uh, tool because the NACP is basically the manifesto of Pakatan Harapan. It is mm. aimed to show full results in by 2023. That means by 2023, you uh, you you're going to limit the term of the prime minister to two terms, the Menteri Besar to two terms. Mm. You're going to have uh, you're going to have new laws that promotes freedom of information. You you're going to you're going to stop uh, political appointees do GLCs so it's it's very comprehensive and and there are timelines given there and every and the, the stakeholders everybody and everyone within government and outside government the success of Pakatan Harapan will be what happens by 2023 and how much of the NACP mm. has been implemented because they went to town with it about how this is mm. going to this is the, this is the next best thing since uh, this sli will, since sliced bread this will be the game changer yeah. Pakran what do you think uh, the two things that sticks out for me one is freeing the media we if it was before yes. this government, we wouldn't be sitting down here and criticizing the ministers and the whole cabinet <laughs> and the prime minister. So there's so much discussion in the media now. Even media is owned by the opposition, mm. are carrying front page stories and commentaries from like Terence and whacking the opposition. You know, so so that's that's a major breakthrough for us here. And I hope and that And the BN organi news organizations are allowed to continue to criticize. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So, and that's uh, what I was saying. It's, it's so yeah. free. Yeah. Uh, the other thing is maybe. 
some might not agree, but the, the fuel cap has really worked. Yeah. Today, I checked with the fuel companies, the price would have been 2 ringgit 50 cents if not for the fuel cap, which is 2.15, right? Yeah. yeah. So, someone's very happy, but he must have to say that. But, <laughs> but I think, <laughs> but I think, think that is, is huge. <laughs> okay. The fuel cap is huge because that's a promise they, they made. Yeah. Took a bit late, uh, much later because of some by-elections <laughs> they came up with. Right. But, but they did it, yeah. Okay. Uh, I think the Pakatan Harapan's biggest success besides on MDB mm. is Mahade. Mm. Okay. What do you mean by that? He has got control. He knows what he's doing. Uh, at least whatever that comes under him, he's got it in the right direction. Just for your information, Parker, the fuel cap is to be replaced. It's going to be replaced by fuel subsidy, right. which no mm. one in the MOF is pretty sure how it will be worked. Mm. Uh, and it is going to be privatised. But that's okay. a good move because no, I don't think everyone should enjoy no, it's, 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 it's not yeah. the good. If you remember that the fuel cap and subsidy was first introduced by Kairi Jamaluddin when he was a youth and sports minister. That was when they, under the TN50 they wanted, uh, if you had owned a Mercedes, you are not entitled to any subsidy. Your car value yeah. must be X amount. Yeah. It, it all came from there. It's not a new idea. Right. And even the company that is supposedly getting the contract to do it is based is basing their subsidy based on uh, subsidy introduction based on that formula. Right. So the fuel cap is not new. Okay. Well, we'll go back to the parts of the cost of living and the economy in, in another episode of front page. But you reckon that Pakatan Harapan's greatest achievement has it's been Mahade. Mahade. Yes, it is. I think he's personally responsible for the one MDB getting getting the cloud over our head. I think the pride that Pat Terrans feel when he walks up to London or New York or whatever, that is purely, <laughs> purely Mahade. That's good team. You know, so <laughs> whatever, you know. Uh, the recognition given to Malaysia today, internationally, is yeah. Mahade. I mean, look, uh, Masli can have his black socks, uh, Redwan can have his flying cars, but really, at the end of the day, nobody will remember this except us this time next year. It will be Mahade. Okay? Yeah. Yeah. He, but my only reservation is the man is 94 years old right. this year. Yes. Yes. I mean, he's not going to be uh, I don't know. Uh, well, well, he said he's not going to be in power for long. Uh, Gayatri, just a quick um, final thoughts. What, yeah. what do you consider Pakatan Harapan one year in Putrajaya as their uh, greatest achievement? Well, it's not implemented fully yet, and uh, so we can't say whether it's successful, but wanting to reform parliament is probably mm. a major significant step. I think, uh, again, it, we haven't really seen it in its full form as yet, but I think that, um, that's that been a major sort of a gap, I think, when it comes to, um, you know, in terms of uh, democratic governance. So I think um, wanting to reform parliamentary process is actually a key area. Wonderful. All right, well, that was, I guess, our assessments, <laughs> you know, it was both critical and uh, uh, complimentary to Pakatan Harapan in their one year in Putrajaya so far. What we're going to do for the next episode of Front Page is to take a look at the how much they've done to address the rising cost of living. So make sure you stay tuned for that.